<laughs> Jordan Smith. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so good to have you here. Oh, it's so good to be here. Uh, you know, we were following you all during the season of The Voice. And we would come back and play some of your, your music the day after, your, your performances and this and that. And we were sitting here going, how could he not win? Yep. How could you not <laughs> When? But were you impressed with the with the other performers on The Voice this past season? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would I would go and sing and feel good about a performance of mine, and then I would watch everyone else, and I would just like hang my head and be like, "What the crap? Really? What are these people I mean, doing?" I mean, is is it really like that? I mean, you, you you give it your all, and then you sit down thinking good things, and then all of a sudden you see a really great performance, and you're like, "Well, wait a minute." Yeah, absolutely. You're like, what in the world? Now, wow. would you want to go after the great performance or before the great performance? Um, I would probably, I would want to go after, because then that just ups your game a little, you know? It, it gives you a little motiva motivation. Yeah. It, it lights it, the fire. Because yeah. then you know, like, what you have to beat. There were a couple of times when I performed and I was like, oh, I feel pretty good about that. And then someone went after me and I was like, mm. oh, shoot. Never wow. mind. Oh, wow. Never mind. <laughs> but you have to keep in mind, and I'm sure I'm the millionth person who said this to you. Your worst performance, in your mind, it still to us is a fantastic performance. I mean, you are your own worst critic. I must it's assume it's true. Yeah, are you, well, you like that? Like you get you get finished with the performance and you're critiquing already in your head. Oh yeah, Zach, like I get I, I get finished with the performance and then I immediately like sit and wait for it to go on YouTube and then I go and pick out everything that I did wrong. Do you really? Or I usually remember what I did that I didn't like okay. and then I just dread I dread usually watching oh. it. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm just like, you know what? It is what it is, and that's a good I had fun. That's so. a good way to do it. Yeah. And so yeah. you're from Kentucky. Yes, sir. And you grew up uh, in a musical household. Your parents mm -hmm. both musicians. That's right. And so you uh, you sang in the church choir, choir at school, I'm assuming? Yeah, I did all that stuff. But beyond, you know, doing it with others in the choir, beyond um, singing, you know, in, in groups, what, what was music to you when you were growing up? What was the importance of music in your life? Can you look back on that and really think it through? Like, yeah. What was it to you? <laughs> yeah. I, um, it was just kind of my, it was my thing. You know, I, um, I wasn't good at a lot of other things. That was my thing that I was good at. And I worked hard in school and I would, I would spend, I would go to school at, you know, seven in the morning and I would stay there until seven at night just because I was after school working on stuff for music or musical theater or band or something like that. And, um, and so for me, it was just my thing that I was good at. Like at the end of the day, if I had failed at everything else, I knew that that was my thing that I could at least, that I, could, I was good at and I didn't have to worry about that that one thing right. wrong. When you can figure out what music means to you beyond the schooling end of it, I mean, you know, like songs you listen to when you're growing up, listening to the radio, and do you remember, like, what, was music just always an important part of your life at all Absolutely. times? Absolutely, yeah. I, I joke, I always, um, I always imagine music in my head for like all the every situation. So there's always like background music for what's happening. <laughs> right. It's like if I do something stupid, there's like silly sounding music in the background. Like the soundtrack in a movie. And for sad moments, there's like violins. And, and so I just always, <laughs> like it just kind of accompanies everything that happens. You know what I mean? And and so, uh, yeah, it was just kind of my, it was my solace when I was upset, when I was, you know, happy, when I was excited. I loved singing. I loved listening to music on the radio. I, I just, um, I, in church, that was kind of where it, it became so important to me because it was my connection to God and the way that I connected people to God. And so right. it's just kind of how that developed into a spiritual love, not only of God through music, but of the music itself too. Well, you know, um, so we were talking earlier before the, before we started talking on the air about this journey. I mean, he went on to The Voice, then he gets moved on and moved on and moved on and moved on. And then boom, he wins. And then it's like <laughs> someone grabs your hand and like yanks you into the ocean and you you got to swim. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's been nonstop. And during all of this nonstopery, you got engaged. You're trying to have a life at the same time. This must be taking up a lot of your life. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it's still going from, you know, I'm, I'm saying 55 miles per hour in life to 155 miles per hour in the, in what, less than a year? Yeah. yeah. Even less than that. I mean, how are you feeling? I mean, is it surreal? Yeah, it's crazy to think, you know, just a year ago, I was sitting in class at college, working two jobs, wow. like traveling on the weekends with my college choir, trying to pay my way through college. And, um, and then it's just the stuff with the voice happened. And I don't think I realized at the time just how much it would change everything. And I thought it was hard work until I won. And then I actually started the real hard work. <laughs> um, and, and then it's just been like 100 miles an hour, like you said, since then. And I feel good about it. I, I think that um, it could be a lot 
worse. I could be begging for opportunities and struggling and and I've been really blessed and lucky to to have chances like this to be here and do lots of amazing things, but also just to kind of tell my story to people. Right. And so for me, I mean, it is a lot of hard work and it is a lot of rapid changes, but it's all worth it whenever you sit down and consider, you know, what I'm getting to do. Wow. You said that, um, again, when we were talking off the air a little bit, you said you always wanted to do music, but you never really pictured this. Mm -hmm. So what what was your future in your head? What were you shooting for? What did that look like for you? I honestly, I didn't know. I was um, studying music business in college. I studied music business for three years. And so for me, I wanted to produce or, or eventually be a manager or do something like that. I was just more focused on, um, you know, being able to tell other people what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a little bit more focused on eventually being behind the scenes more than... Right. Yeah. I, I just thought that that's how I was, I was meant to, to make music. And, and so I wanted to be a singer, but I didn't really consider myself an artist or a performer as much. I just knew that I loved to sing and then I, I thought I had an okay voice. And so it wasn't until <laughs> oh my I thought it's I was like, okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> anyway, when I got onto the show, um, I kind of just started realizing that every week, you know, I, that I was an artist and I had something to say. And, and then when I got to a point like somebody to love, I was like, you know, I feel comfortable here on stage. Like, this is where I feel at home. And that's kind of when I started to realize that that's I this is that. what I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just I just want to say something to you. I hope that, and, I'm, and who am I? We just met each other, and who am I to say this to you? I'm hoping that you just stop down every once in a while and just let people's words truly, truly soak in. And just, just sit there and go, okay, you know what? Thank you. Thank you very much. And just be proud. You know, you should, you have so much to be proud of. All right, so where are you going next? What are you doing next? Um, I'm doing a lot of promotion for this new album that's coming out tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, well, let's talk about that. Yeah. All right, all right. Let's, come on. <laughs> so the album. Confetti. It's called Something, the debut studio album, Something Beautiful, mm -hmm. is out tomorrow. Tomorrow, can, March can 18th. You, can you pre-purchase right now on iTunes? Oh, yeah. Oh, why wait till tomorrow when you can do it today? It's St. Patrick's Day before you start doing... Shots of whiskey. <laughs> While you're still sober. Exactly. Yeah, Are but you if you're not sober, maybe you'll buy more than one. Yeah. That's what happens. That's yeah, right. So maybe do yourself a favor tonight, and then when you wake up in the morning, you can be like, oh, look, oh, a look at all this new music. <laughs> <laughs> or wake up tomorrow like, did I order that? <laughs> it's so important. It's something beautiful. Do a, do a pre-purchase right now. Go to iTunes and get it done. Uh, I'm dying to hear the whole album. I want to hear the whole thing. Me too. I need a good cry. <laughs> you know, really, have you heard it? Sure, you've yeah, heard your um, album. Over and over and over and over. And Are you a fan of your new album? I am. I'm, would, re I'm really proud of it. Would you buy it? I, yeah, I mean. Why don't you go buy a I, copy? I, I, How funny would that be? I probably will, actually. Go so Jordan it, Smith, of course, Stand in the Light, beautifully performed for us, and the debut studio album, Something Beautiful. Go purchase it right now. Jordan Smith, <laughs> back Thank you.